As we continue our discussion on transport in terms of cell transport and the transport of materials, we've now discussed transport in the sort of aspect and component of passive versus active. What we're now going to be focusing on in this next flowchart, which is going to be entitled Transport 2, is a type of passive transport specific to water. And we touched upon it in our previous video. And that transport is known as osmosis. Osmosis is a term many of us have heard before, and it's a type of passive transport. So we'll just write PT next to it to keep that in mind. Just to introduce the concept a little bit before we get into the details, osmosis is defined as simply the diffusion of H2O or water, whatever you want to say, diffusion of H2O um, across a selectively permeable membrane. And remember, all cells contain this. They have a selectively permeable membrane. And when water flows through them, it follows a certain rule. The rule of osmosis is the same as the rule of any other simple type of diffusion. And that is that the concentration gradient has to be followed. It has to flow down a concentration gradient from a concentration of high to low. If we have lots of water in one area and a little bit of water in the other, what we expect through the process of osmosis is for them to try to even out by going from high water, lots of water spreading and going towards the area of lower water. We'll talk about that in terms of cell biology in just a second. So another thing you want to know are some terms in terms of water chemistry. Um, solvent is simply something that's going to be considered uh, the dissolver, I'd like to think of it as. Water is a universal solvent. Many things dis get dissolved in water because water is a good dissolver. It's a good solvent otherwise. The opposite of that would be a solute. And a solute is the material that is dissolved. So think of like sugar or salt. These things are dissolved within solvents. Solutes are dissolved in solvents, solvents dissolve solutes. Be comfortable interchanging these two dependent on the meaning. In addition, we want to very quickly talk about the direction of osmosis as well, something we've talked about, but just to reiterate and write down in words, the direction of, of, of osmosis is specifically determined by the difference in the solute concentration, actually. So this is sort of interesting. The solute concentration defines the direction of osmosis. So if we have, let's say, lots of solute on one side and a lot less solute over here, what we imagine is if both of these things are in water, so we drew them in the beaker with water, What's going to happen is if I create a membrane that opens up between these, what we expect to see is more of the water transferring from the area in which there's a high concentration. So what we expect to see is that this difference in solute concentration define the direction of our osmosis. What we're going to see is that this environment right here that's full of a lot of solute is going to have a very interesting relationship to this environment full of a lot of solvent. I'll talk about that in our very next section of the flowchart. This is just to visualize very quickly what we're going to be talking about right now. So as I take this off, now we're going to begin talking about the comparison of two solutions. This is a big part of osmosis and biology in and of itself. It's the comparison of two solutions. This is how we can sort of apply the knowledge that comes from osmosis. So we can have three outcomes that can occur in solutions. We can have an isotonic solution. We can also have a hypertonic solution. Hypertonic solution. And then we can also have a hypotonic solution. All three are in terms of two solutions comparing each other. Two solutions can be isotonic to each other, one solution can be hypertonic to the other, and one solution can be hypotonic to the other. We'll talk about these with direct examples. So, 
Isotonic is the easy one. Everybody remembers this. Iso just means the same or very similar, and tonic just refers to the amount of solute. So what we imagine this solution is, an isotonic solution, two solutions are isotonic when they have the same solute concentration. So we'll write that down. Two, I'll write S-O-L-N-S, that stands for solutions with same, and then in biology or chemistry, when you, are, when you want to write concentration, all you do is these brackets and you write down the concentration of what inside. So this stands for two solutions with same solute, brackets mean concentration. Okay, This is what we would consider just right. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Hypertonic solution would be something that has hypertonicity. Hyper means more or accelerated or more of than usual. So this would mean that we have an increased concentration of something. What is the concentration going to be increased of? The solute, of course, because that's what we're talking about. Increased solute concentration versus what? Versus the water. Versus a much lower concentration of water. So we have a high concentration of solute versus the lower concentration of water. We have a lot of solute in a little bit of water. Remember, this is the comparison of two solutions. The two solutions in the isotonic comparison are exactly the same. They have the same amount of solute. Whereas in a hypertonic environment, let's say, we have an increased amount of solute in one and a lot less water within it as well. Those are the two solutions being compared. So what we expect in this situation is Let's say if we have this, let's imagine lemonade, let's say. This lemonade is just right in terms of what's within it. The water, the lemon, the sugar specifically also, let's say, because the sugar is a good solute to think of. Here, what would you expect the lemonade to taste like? If this is just right, a hypertonic lemonade would be what? It would be either too sugary or too lemony, either or, either or of those flavors. So we can imagine this as too much sugar. In lemonade, let's say. I won't have room for to write it, but you understand the analogy. And then because of that, we can now think of hypotonic. Hypo means below or less than. This is actually going to be the situation in which the concentration of what is increased? The water. In this situation, the water concentration is increased versus the concentration of what, of course? The solute, which is decreased, which is less than usual. It's hypotonic. This is a hypotonic solution, and in this one, what we would imagine in our lemonade example is that we have too much water. It's too watery, the lemonade. Too much water. It's not sweet enough. It's not flavorful enough. That's our hypotonic solution. So be very, very comfortable figuring out whether something is hypertonic, hypotonic, or isotonic when you have to compare two different solutions. The importance of this in terms of biology is in relation to cells, and we're going to get into that in our next video, but overall in this first introduction to osmosis, we understand that osmosis is passive transport. It involves no energy because it uses concentration gradients, going from high to low. Solvent and solute are two terms you have to know. The universal solvent is water. It is the universal dissolver of things. It's a good thing to dissolve with. Solutes get dissolved in water. They are the things that are within water that get dissolved. The direction of osmosis is determined by the difference in solute concentration. So if we have solute concentration that's hypertonic, we expect water to enter the environment because we want to make it less hyper. We want to create a more watery environment. Whereas in this one, we want to create a less watery environment so we would take out water. So the direction of osmosis would be outwards from this solution. So that is osmosis as an introduction.